China's COVID lockdowns have left some Xinjiang residents dead. The EU's Intel chief cancels a trip to Taiwan after China finds out. And Xi Jinping makes his first trip abroad since the start of the pandemic. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. John Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. You probably know that companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, maybe hundreds, most of which you've never heard of, and you have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps stop them. I'll explain more at the end. So you may have heard the Chinese Communist Party is genociding Uyghurs in Xinjiang. Well, for those who aren't already in concentration camps or detention centers, they are now in another kind of prison, their homes. Parts of Xinjiang have been under lockdown for over 40 days. And as if that weren't bad enough, there are reports some have died from the lockdown. Radio Free Asia reports that as many as a dozen people have died from starvation or lack of access to medicine. The Campaign for Uyghurs says they have seen videos showing authorities locking Uyghurs in their homes. The videos show Uyghurs asking local government authorities to let them out and to bring food to feed their starving children, as well as truckfuls of Uyghur naan bread being thrown away as waste and fruits and vegetables being left to rot in warehouses. The Xinjiang resident told Washington Post that local officials only unlock their doors to give them COVID tests. Since they can't go out, they've been relying on the same authorities to bring them food. One resident of Ely Prefecture, where the lockdown is happening, said their neighborhood committee has been offering only to sell them food at higher than normal prices, and it didn't do so often. Starving the people while turning a profit. A proud communist tradition. If this sounds like deja vu, it is. And I'm not just referring to the Great Leap Forward. Something similar happened to the residents of Xi'an earlier this year. Protests started after reports of food being wasted as people were starving went viral on social media. And protests are happening in Xinjiang, too. Authorities detained hundreds of villagers after they tried to protest the COVID lockdown. A local police officer told Radio Free Asia that they had detained more than 600 mostly young Uyghurs for staging a street protest against the lockdown and the lack of food. Meanwhile, warnings aired on state-run TV said people would be punished as separatists if they spread rumors about COVID in Xinjiang. Well, people can't spread rumors if they're already detained, am I right? You know another great way to stop rumors from spreading? Censorship, another proud communist tradition. Chinese censors are targeting online videos and posts showing the Xinjiang lockdown. Videos like this one, which appears to have been posted by a Han Chinese woman in a quarantine camp in Xinjiang. Yes, in that quarantine camp, she's literally in a tent. Another video showed a couple and their newborn baby outside the residential complex at night, unable to return home after the woman had given birth in a hospital. But Chinese censors aren't just deleting these videos. They're trying to stop people from talking about the Xinjiang lockdown at all by drowning the topic out on social media. That's according to censorship instructions that were leaked to China Digital Times. You see, the problem is that Chinese people are starting to feel sympathetic toward people under lockdown in Xinjiang, including Uyghurs. That's a problem, because the Chinese Communist Party has spent a long time and a lot of effort trying to convince people that Uyghurs are dangerous terrorists who need to be locked up for the safety of the country. They can't have people feeling sympathy for Uyghurs, because then they might start to think the Communist Party shouldn't be locking them up and genociding them. So the leaked instructions told censors to flood social media hashtags with other content on any topic, like domestic life, parenting, or cooking. Just don't make it look too obvious by posting too often. The problem is Chinese internet users could spot the common flooding from a mile away and started mocking the accounts that were doing it. 
That's the thing about the internet, it always fights back. Xinjiang isn't the only place under lockdown in China. About 20% of China's population is facing some sort of COVID restriction. Last week, authorities told citizens to minimize travel during the Mid-Autumn Festival and National Day holidays in October. It also asked local governments to test all residents regularly for COVID, regardless of infection levels. With only 16 cases officially reported this week, Beijing is no exception. The Beijing government announced on Monday that employees and students must show a negative COVID-19 test taken within the previous 48 hours to return to work and school on Tuesday after the three-day mid-autumn festival holiday. The CCP wants to make sure nothing embarrassing happens during next month's party congress. Something embarrassing like a COVID outbreak, which would show the party's war on COVID, isn't working. That's why even cities around Beijing are going all out to prevent COVID from spreading. Authorities in Sanhe and Hebei province announced a four-day lockdown from Tuesday morning and four rounds of mass testing after one confirmed infection. That meant public transportation and taxis weren't operating. One Sanha resident who snuck out of his complex said he had to walk an hour and a half to get to a train station just so he could go to work in Beijing. He arrived in Beijing after three and a half hours, and he planned to stay at his workplace for four days to avoid the lockdown. Instead of working from home, you can home from work. I can't see any downsides to having no work-life separation. And after the break, Hong Kongers are nostalgic for British rule. Welcome back. Germany is drawing up a new trade policy for China that's meant to show China who's the boss. Germany's economy minister told Reuters that China was a welcome trading partner, but Germany could not allow Beijing's protectionism to distort competition and would not hold back criticism of human rights violation under threat of losing business. The policy hasn't been unveiled yet. However, the economy minister said it will reduce Germany's reliance on Chinese raw materials, batteries, and semiconductors. Now, this is significant because China is Germany's biggest trading partner. And it has been for the last six years. It's also significant because as recently as two years ago, Germany wasn't very clear about the Chinese security threat. Former Chancellor Angela Merkel was on the fence about letting China's telecom giant Huawei into Germany's 5G infrastructure. She finally caved under pressure from the US, other EU nations, and German lawmakers. The new Chancellor, Olaf Scholz, has vowed to be a lot tougher on China like by reducing or even scrapping investment and export guarantees for China and no longer promoting trade fairs. Not promoting trade fairs, that'll show the CCP. Thousands of Hong Kongers came out despite sweltering heat and an air pollution warning to pay their respects to Queen Elizabeth this week. They waited up to four hours in a long queue that stretched more than 500 meters into a public park to sign the Book of Condolence for Queen Elizabeth II. The next day, thousands turned up again, prompting the consulate to extend opening hours to 7 p.m. for the whole week. In 1997, the UK handed Hong Kong back to China after China agreed to let Hong Kong maintain its democratic system for at least 50 years, which didn't happen. For many Hong Kongers, remembering the British monarch is a way of expressing fondness for a bygone era. Under British rule, they had more freedom of speech and rule of law than they do today under CCP rule. Which is why the Beijing-backed Dagong Bao newspaper accused Hong Kong mourners of colonial nostalgia and said it was proof that work on decolonization should be intensified. Which is absurd, since the CCP also now claims Hong Kong was never a British colony. Hong Kongers' nickname for the Queen is Boss Lady, and I can imagine that didn't go over well in Beijing. If there's one thing they can't stand, it's someone else being called the boss. Which is why people are now apologizing for mourning Queen Elizabeth. And after the break, an EU intelligence chief had to cancel a trip to Taiwan after China found out. Welcome back. The EU's top intelligence official canceled a trip to Taiwan after his secret plans were reportedly leaked to China. The director of the European Union Intelligence and Situation Center was supposed to visit in October. Once China found out, it reportedly put pressure on the EU to stop it. And it did. The development calls into question whether a human or data leak from the EU was involved, 
with diplomats also concerned about the EU's change of plans after Beijing's intervention. An EU official later told Politico it was never supposed to be a trip, but merely a phone call. That official also said it was canceled because of how China reacted to Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan last month. So basically, China has a hissy fit, everyone gets scared, and China gets its way. You would think that by now we would have figured out a better response to that. And Xi Jinping is finally leaving the country. It's his first trip since the start of the pandemic. Xi flew all the way to Kazakhstan. He then headed to Uzbekistan for a summit with other Asian countries. And he even met with Putin at the summit, which is the first time he's seen his BFF since the war in Ukraine began. Putin thanked Xi for his balanced stance on Ukraine, and he even brought a giant table with him. The summit is called the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. It's a China-led security and economic forum that brings together different Asian countries. It's been characterized as China's version of NATO. Both India and Pakistan are core members, so it's clear this is not a group of friends. India is also wary of China, which has been creeping over their disputed border. Then there's Kazakhstan's pushback over Russia's claim that all the former Soviet territories were historically part of Russia. The vice president of the Carnegie Endowment in Washington said, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization has struggled to drive regional economic integration because it is neither a trade pact nor an investment vehicle, and its members often disagree about specific infrastructure and development schemes. So it's trying to be a copy of NATO, but it doesn't work very well and has limited value. What we have here is clearly a Chinese knockoff. And this episode is sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything online, there's a huge number of companies that collect your personal data. Look at all of them. And these are just the ones that have collected my data. These unscrupulous companies collect things like your name, your email, your address, even your social security number. And what are they doing with this personal data? They're buying it, selling it, and trading it to other companies to sell you products or create a profile of you. And when these companies get hacked, you could be in big trouble. And yes, I said when, not if. Because according to the former head of the NSA, China has hacked every major corporation in the US. So if your data is out there, it's not safe. That's why you need to get your data taken offline. That's what Incogni does. Incogni forces these companies to delete your data using all the applicable laws. Now, theoretically, you could do it yourself. If you knew what the laws were and how to write those companies with the correct type of request slash threat to remove your data. But that's an enormous amount of work. Incogni handles it for you. Just a few months after signing up, Incogni had already gotten my details removed from 20 of these data brokers with 34 more in progress. And I didn't have to do anything after signing up. So check out Incogni using the link below or go to incogni.com slash uncensored. The first 100 people to use the code uncensored will get 20% off. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.